Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the OTP channel. My name is Alex Murray, also known as AZ Axel. I am the tech support here at OTP. Yeah, it does kind of feel like a bit of like a Bob Ross kind of thing. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to now make a painting really fast. We're going to make a gorgeous, gorgeous painting. Lots of happy trees. Lots of happy players. We won't make any mistakes. Just little happy accidents. So join me as we make some custom leagues. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first uh, episode of what will be many, many, many episodes of us uh, trying to basically go through all of the details of how to make custom leagues. And we're going to go through league creation. We're going to start at the basics 101, the very, very basics. And we're going to go and try to go all the way up through the most extremely technical parts of the game. So I've got an entire like list of stuff that we're going to be trying to work through. <laughs> like I've got like uh, we want to go through like global settings, you know, our league settings and a whole bunch of other stuff and how to be able to, um, you know, just get all of the setting ends of things done. Those are pretty ex experienced and advanced right there. But then we're also going to do stuff like tournaments, winter leagues. We're going to redo the feeder stuff as well, but we'll basically condense, condense the feeder stuff since we already did that. We'll cover financials. If you guys want to do that, we can cover financials. We're going to cover associations. We're going to cover tournaments and world baseball classics. We're going to cover how to do custom logos, uniforms, how to be able to do player name lists, edits, how to be able to do stadiums, um, custom stadiums, as well as being able to use the construction kit to be able to enhance your stadium usage, as well as downloading stadiums and being able to get those into your games. We're going to work on the schedules. We're going to actually show off how to make your own schedules from scratch or by using our generator. We actually have a couple that have been submitted by fans. I'm going to actually be showing off one of those. I'll be talking about its limitations, its good, its pros and cons, basically. We'll talk a whole, about, whole bunch about uh, schedules. We'll talk about playoffs. We'll talk about being able to, I mean, playoffs? Really? Playoffs? Yeah, we'll talk about playoffs as well. We'll talk about how to be able to do um, uh, custom playoffs-ish, custom-ish, uh, basically all the different types of playoffs we have in OOTP. We will discuss that as well. We will be talking about promotions and relegations. Exactly, Bull Cubs. We'll be talking about promotions, relegations. We'll be talking about being able to um, basically have an entire evolving league that can constantly be changing, and you can make it whatever size you'd like. We will also be talking a little bit about um, kind of what you need to think about when you make your custom league and how to best plan for that and how to be able to do that. So unfortunately, yes, we're not going to be talking about online leagues today. There's going to be probably a whole other series about online leagues at a later time when I actually have the ability to sit down with somebody who can give me the advanced details of online leagues because that is the one part, the only part of OOTP that I am not entirely familiar with is the online league stuff and the settings and the FTP stuff and the testing and the filezilla stuff that just i just i never touched that growing up because i knew that it would be a pain so now i need to so eventually we will get around to doing a, a series about that we will end up going into that area as well of otp so i hope you guys are ready to come along for a ride on all this because we've got a lot of stuff to talk about um we may end up splitting some of these streams in half and uh, being able to do maybe some of the submitted ideas alongside a short episode. So we may do a short episode about league creation and then branch off, take a break, come back, and then cover a different uh, subject. I have a couple different uh, ideas that people have been submitting over the time frame from last week. We had someone ask about ballpark factors and whether or not you'd be able to demonstrate and show off exactly how big ballpark factors have uh, an influence on teams. Um, I need to redo episode one, our catcher ability stream, because unfortunately that wasn't done as professionally as I'd like it to have been done. So we will be redoing that one and re-uploading that. I may even do that offline and then just make an episode while I record it on my own and then walk through it so I have more control over it. But we'll see about that. It might be another, it might be another Science Saturday stream at that point. 
Also, someone asked about optimizing ticket prices. Uh, I'm guessing that also comes into play with your financial stuff. There isn't as much in terms of testing for ticket prices. I've always found that there's a happy medium spot that you want to hit for your team, but we can at least talk about that and make sure that people are aware of kind of what to try to do with your organization and what you should be trying to best accomplish. Hold on one second here. Got to do one quick little change. Forgot to put my full screen monitor up so I could see what I'm looking at. There we go. So there's also uh, two other things that have been submitted over the course of the past week. And that was that one of those was all speed offensive strategies and how to be able to um, utilize speed in your game to be able to make a team that maybe was just all speed and what that would look like what we'd be able to do about that and uh, how would you, you know, how would that kind of a team react to another part of a, you know, the rest of the league that doesn't have full speed at that point. So if you had all the speedsters on your team, what would that look like? What would that exactly do to your organization if you emphasized running? Your run game was like your biggest thing. And then lastly, and that I have on my list as of right now is I versus avoid K. Someone wanted to know and do a deep dive into I versus avoid K and then consequently a sub, uh, a sub question about that actually was gap power versus home run power, which is, those are both pretty easy examples to explain, but it's nice to show off exactly what the game will do, depending upon which one you've got. We can absolutely do that as well, be able to show off uh, the results that two individuals will get if they have the exact same ratings, but uh, one is full gap power and the other one is full home run power. What what exactly that will change in their statistic that they get coming back from that. And the same thing for I and Avoid K. Those will probably be clumped together in one stream. We might take uh, Avoid K versus I for the first half and then uh, Gap Power versus Home Run Power for the second half. Woo! Yeah, a lot of these things are, are, are what people are uh, asking for and they want to know more about, so I'm happy to be able to do that. Um, but I get a lot of questions about people who... Um, well, not a lot of questions. I have I have a lot of people who have asked me that they're that they don't feel comfortable making custom games. Um, they don't know. They don't want to deep dive into all of it because it's just so so much of an immense uh, immense you know just struggle to be able to make um, to make a, a custom league and everything about that. So we're gonna take uh, at least this first stream this is going to be league creation 101 ladies and gentlemen this is intro class to league creation there will be 102 103 104 105 and then we will go into 201 202 <laughs> actually we probably are we're probably going to make this into some kind of like a college class type situation where we're going to basically go through the basics we're going to cover the basics in this stream we're going to cover kind of what to uh, be thinking about when you're making your when you're making your custom league and then understanding what the different types are that you have available to you. <laughs> Examine two days. <laughs> Actually, it might be like a couple of weeks. But um, yes, there may be a test. <laughs> oh, no, there's not going to be a test. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Um, but we do want to be able to let you all understand exactly what the game needs from you when you set up a custom league. And so that way you guys don't make as many mistakes because, and this is something I was thinking about for the past a couple of days as I was trying to noodle through why I wanted to do this series. And the whole entire idea was I've had so many people, and myself is included in this boat, I'm not perfect, I, I, I know the game, but I'm not perfect, where I have an inspiration to make a new game. I want to make something really, really nice. And let me go ahead and swap over to the screen so you guys can actually see what we're on. Just the main menu for right now. But I had the, you know, these, these moments where it's like, yes, I want to do something. I want to make something big. And then I get about, I would say about an hour or two into creating this new massive league. And I test it and I realize it, it was probably broken from like the first five minutes. Just, just it, it, was, it was completely broken. And I've wasted two hours of my life. And it's like, I need to go outside for a second. I might need to go see some people and some sunlight. And maybe I need to go to something else for a little bit and come back before I throw my computer out the window. So the last thing I want to do is let people struggle and, and stay in that position of not understanding what they're doing wrong. And then 
not wanting to try it again because it wasted so much of their time. And I've had that so many times happen to me where I'm, I mean, if you guys want to know, I think I still have it. The United, uh, <laughs> this is the USBL, which I think is actually mislabeled. It should be the World Baseball League. You may notice the 5.7 on this. Okay? This is 5.7. This is this is version 5.7 of a league I've been making for about two to three years now. And I'll show it off here for you guys to be able to look at it because it's got a lot of stuff in it. This is a massive league. Anyone who's been watching me do my individual Twitch channel streams uh, before I streamed here on OTP knows just how massive this league is. This is a massive, massive league. This is a 500-plus team league. It has multiple major leagues, a massive player development league, a world baseball tournament, an association that comes that goes along with it. For every single one of the leagues, they're part of a massive playoff series that gets played. Um, there's multiple stages. There's multiple... Basically, baseball's played 24-7 inside this league, but... It has 5.7 different versions that I've run through, okay? So this is just an example of what happens when you basically have been making a game for so long that you've run through so many different edits and changes to the league that you've forgotten basically what you've done to the league in terms of additions and versions and what you've changed. So, the I mean, you can... <laughs> You can go this slowly and, you know, start it from the ground up and go real slowly. But once you get to the point where you've been a, working on a league for a year, you start to wonder whether or not it's ever going to get finished. So the last thing I want to do is have all of you guys struggle to make a league for about three to four years. And then you come back to me and say, this is version 6.5 of my league. I've made 30 different versions of it. I've made so many changes. And uh, it's finally ready. And then we make a new game and you import it and you find out that you have to do it all over again. Because they've made so many changes to the game by the time you finished it that it's just, you have to basically make it from scratch again. Which is basically what I'm having to do with the USBL 5.7 is it needs to be basically remade. Um, that league has about, I think it's 20,000 players involved in it. Um... I'm on 3.0.4, just figuring out the teams for my league. Yes, yes, that is also one of the things you have to worry about as well. Is okay now. How creative do you want to get with your with your uh, with your teams? Um, do you need to you know maybe go back to more of a simpler approach? And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about here on the intro and this be in this beginners course, this the basics class here, is we need to be able to come to an understanding of when ambition meets, you know, um, logistics and possible uh, creations. Because you can come into OTP with the mindset of, I can do anything I want. Well, that's true. You can do anything you want outside of maybe, you know, change the amount of innings that are played in a game. I, I don't think I've ever seen that be an editable thing. Um, but your computer is going to limit you. Okay, so if you're going to make a custom league, we need to get some things out of the way. And this is what actually part one of today's lesson is going to be, is understanding size, speed, and planning. Because if you don't come into this with any sort of planning involved, you're going to be trying to, you know, basically bat at the breeze, I think is the best terminology. And it's a good pun because it's a baseball pun. Um, but basically, you don't want to walk into creating a custom league without any kind of planning or any kind of an idea of what you want. Um, because otherwise, you're going to be making a game, and then you know a day later, you're going to be like thinking about new inspirational ideas, and you're going to change the entire league on a whim. And some of the ideas you had in the first part aren't going to match what you have in the second part. The original idea for the USBL, I should have just stayed inside of that for right now, the original idea for this United States Baseball League, which I think is supposed to be called the World Baseball League, um, was to have every single nation have their own league. That was the idea. The idea was to have every single nation have their own league, and they would play against themselves for a playoff series, and then they would go play against everybody else 
in the association playoff, and then the entire nation would pool together their best players and send them to the World Baseball Classic. That was the whole entire idea. So, well, not 160 dangerous teams. This was only going to be, I think it was 30 or 32. So, I mean, you've got Canada, United States, Mexico. Uh, we've got Japanese, which is Japan, Korea, Taiwan. Uh, who else did we have in this league? We had a lot of European nations. We have Germany, Czechoslovakia. Or no, sorry, Czech Republic, my bad. Austria, Sweden, Greece, Switzerland, Italy, Israel. Um, we, and that's just Eastern Europe. Then we have the Great Islands, which is Australia, New Zealand, Dominican Republic, uh, Cuba, and Puerto Rico. And then, of course, we have the South American League, which is Venezuela, uh, Nicaragua, Argentina, Colombia, and Panama. And then we had Western Europe, which is France, Netherlands, Spain, Belgium, Wales, England, Ireland, and Scotland. So this one is just the major, major leagues, with a couple exceptions, because Scotland, Ireland, and Wales don't exactly have baseball organizations that are renowned as being professional baseball organizations. Uh, in fact, I'm missing a big one, and that is Ukraine. Ukraine actually has a very nice, vibrant baseball team. Um, so this is just an idea of, okay, what if MLB, you know, vanished and everything became major leagues? You know, what if the independent American ball became MLB, Japan lost their Nippon League, and their independent league became their big thing? What if every single nation had a major league ball club? And the idea originally, as I said, was to make every single one of these divisions into its own league. The problem was these are all created players, uh, Eli. These, this league has everything fictional. This is all fictional. Nobody here is is from real life. This is just a completely fictional league. The problem was that by the time I had made it all, the list was so long, and this list right here was so long, it went all the way down to the bottom of my screen, and it would take about two to five minutes to simulate one day. Yeah. So I don't think, and I'm having, and, and I've got this on a pretty beefy computer, okay? I've got a pretty decently new cpu i've got it on a solid state drive i've got you know 16 gigabytes of memory that i'm 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 eating any resource i can to simulate and in the end that's exactly the case dangerous team too much of a good thing is still going to be a bad thing even with modern technology otp just cannot write fast enough because in the end if you I mean, technically, you could change your game settings, and we'll talk about this down the road because, actually, no, we should talk about it right now because this is part of speed. Um, so size is one thing. You can make a massive league. The problem is you can't save everything in a massive league, all right? Just saving box scores and news logs, injury logs, transactions, and like the splits, if you can, if you keep all of the splits and the career fielding and the career postseason stuff, all of this data has to be written as it happens. And the game is going to slow down to make sure that everything gets written. And let me see if I can pull up where this gets written to, because you guys can then see what I'm talking about. So let's see, because my folder for that league right now. Let's see if I can figure out what the folder size is. That folder size, I'll bring it on the screen for a second here now. I am assuming it's more than a gig. I was pr it's probably closer to three right now. Um, and we'll see what this goes to, because this can keep climbing and climbing. And the problem, Magus, is that it isn't even that you need an epic PC, because that's not going to make it easier on the game. There we go, 3.41 gigabytes, and this is only simulating about a month. A month. There is so much data in this game. There are, yeah, 18,441 players, 508 teams, 7 leagues, 1 human manager, myself of course, uh, 4,082 coaches, 244 nations of course, because we have all the nations involved, but we only use so many of them. Um, you know, number of cities, ballparks, 880 ballparks. So we have 28,000 scheduled games a year. 
and that's before playoffs. So that's before the association playoffs. That's before the league playoffs. And that's before the World Baseball Classic playoffs. So you're talking about probably another, I'd say about another thousand or two at most. So maybe you're talking more about 30,000 games that have to be played, documented, and written down on your computer every single time you simulate a year in this league. This league is massive. So if you're going to learn anything from me, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You can do this, but understand there will be a time frame. Well, not a time frame, but a point where you need to make some decisions about how big you're actually going to want your, your whole entire fictional world to be, okay? Exactly. When you have 100 games to simulate per day, and there's a lot of off-season time. So basically, there's a lot of times where there are like 400 games happening in one day. Uh, because basically you're having... No, no, no. It's 254. That is the most amount of games we can have happen at one time is 254. Half of the number of teams playing, you know, because they play each other all at once. So you could have upwards of 250 games being played all at one moment. So that doesn't even talk about the OSA reports. If you're doing a playthrough where you're actually going to play as a GM, you're going to get so many OSA reports head scout reports and all of those are saved all of those are saved documents if we go inside of my folder here let me see if i can find the page that has all of these i even almanac i i almanac the year i had to test something else out so that's what happens but let's see how many are inside of here so this is twenty-eight thousand box scores Twenty-eight thousand box scores which is fun. This is a World Baseball Tournament game, Mexico versus Dominican Republic. I think the ending for that, yeah. Venezuela won the World Baseball Tournament in a, a walk-off in the ninth inning. But do you need 28,000 box scores? Do you know how many files are in this save? In fact, let's find out. I think I still have it up. No, I don't even have it up anymore. Bummer. Thought I still had it up. But, um, yeah, when you have this many games and box scores and player history records and a whole bunch of information about the league, it will slow down your PC, okay? It will slow down your PC a ton. Now, you can come in and try to do a purge. You can purge deleted records from your database, get rid of a whole bunch of stuff, because the problem is that when you have this many files needing to be loaded up on your computer at one time. Sorry for the white blinding light. We're already using, if I can figure out how much that is. So we're only using 671 megabytes of memory on this one particular league. But that can go up as the game has to import more and more player face gens and pictures and reports and baseball cards. I don't even know if I have baseball cards turned on. I do have baseball cards turned on. Wow. That's a bold move by me. <laughs> Didn't expect to have baseball cards turned on. Although I don't think there's any loaded into the system right now. I think it's actually blank. Unless maybe, maybe I have some. Let me see if I've got any right now. I know we're kind of skipping around the point of what we're trying to teach, but I'm trying to just explain how much this game makes in terms of data and information and it's good to understand just what the game's trying to do so that way you understand why it runs so slowly it does have baseball cards they're not working correctly because i had a template on them there they are i had imported a tops template for my baseball cards and uh people had different awards but you can see some of them are kind of broken because i guess the all-stars aren't working correctly so i had to go back and fix that all-star template unfortunately uh baseball cards are another thing we might actually look at doing if you guys wanted to see some really cool baseball cards um uh, but i've got 712 baseball cards from multiple seasons i even saw connor mcdavid on here hold on where did he go where are you boy i saw you don't be hiding from me i saw you 
Hold on. I saw him for a second there. I know I saw him. There he is. One of our custom-made players in this league is Connor McDavid, a user actually uh, in our uh, our Twitch channel, uh, or at least someone who follows it. I don't, know if he's, I don't know if he's here right now, but uh, he is someone that has been a part of my channel and a part of OTP uh, for a viewership for a long time. But um, yeah, 700 plus baseball cards. That if they all have to get loaded into the game, that's 700 files that the game has loaded into memory, and this is 163 kilobytes. You have 700 of those. You're looking at 70 megabytes of data just sitting in your memory cache waiting to be pulled. And yeah, the card art's really nice. It's a really cool card. No, not that. I want to see if I can find it really fast here now for you guys. There he is, Sea Dog. But this is in the system. It's, it's already loaded. It doesn't have to load it in. It's already here. So understanding just how much a size uh, matters approach uh, is going to be important for you when you make your own custom. It wasn't plan A, but it did the trick. Oh, gosh. Hold on. That shouldn't be happening. What is running in the background? Why, why am I getting that? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Hold on a second. I got to get that turned off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Um, why is that? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to mute that. I think I can... Okay, I think I can just do that, and that'll, that'll, that'll turn it off. <laughs> Sorry, that is, um, that's a notification that somebody followed me on my main channel. Um, I don't know why that popped up on, um on here because I had those disabled. Um, but either way, either way, no worries, no worries. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> I've, I've muted it, so it won't happen again. Um, I think that was Matrim, actually. Yes, yes, I see you, Matrim. <laughs> Matrim's like, I'm sorry, I've ruined the video. <laughs> Oh, gosh. So, anywho, anywho, hopefully you guys can still hear me. Everything seems good. I think I've turned that off for now, so it won't happen again. Um, but, yeah, understanding how size is going to impact the speed of your simulation is important because I've had so many people who have come back to me and they say, hey, I've made this league, but it sims so slowly. It's just, it's not, it's not simulating fast at all. And um, there's just, you know, it, it's, it's a pain to have to wait, you know, a minute or two for it to just keep going a day at a time. And what did I do wrong? You know, why is it simming slowly? Is it something on my computer's end? Is it something that I need to change in the settings? So let's work on that. Let's, you know, let, let's, let's figure out what a happy place is for most computers, what size of a league is probably going to be about right for you. And unfortunately, the only way to be able to figure that out is to do a lot of testing. Um, yes, the card sync error on PT20 is most likely because of the server load that's happening, especially because it's Saturday. Everybody is playing misplay. So unfortunately, it's going to be regarding internet connections. Um, it could be a server-related issue, but we've been checking the servers lately, and they seem to be okay. My best guess is that everybody in the world is watching stuff um, because it's a Saturday and nobody's working and everybody has nothing to do. They can't go outside because of the quarantine. So unfortunately, a lot of people are going to be basically just watching Netflix and that's just going to clog up the internet. Like literally 90% of the internet right now is literally just Netflix, Disney plus and streaming sites. That's literally it, which is amazing because we're streaming on Twitch and I'm clogging up about three megabytes of internet speed around the world myself. So I'm one to blame for that. So you can blame me, Misplay, for all your problems. So, you know, that's that's on me, unfortunately. Exactly, Sebastis. So we're going to find a happy size for our PC. And if we make happy accidents, it's not a problem. All right, so let's create this league. Oh, my gosh. We can totally make this into a Bob, uh, Bob Ross-esque style training session. So let's get started with the basics. Because all of that was just the introductionary, preliminary, prelude, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, to understanding kind of what we need to think about. So, <sighs> size, speed, and planning. We've talked about size. Depending upon the size of the league that you want to make, 
you need to understand that that size is going to directly impact your speed. Depending upon how many leagues you have, how many teams you have, and how many players you have is going to directly influence how fast your simulation goes. If you only have one league with only, you know, 8 to 12 teams and it's real small, you don't have a feeder system, no, no custom feeder system involved, you know, there's, there's no baseball cards, you're not saving any information, you can simulate games in seconds, literally in seconds. You can simulate seasons in about 30 to 60 seconds if you've got a pretty decent computer and you don't have anything being saved. We've tested that here live on the stream before. We've actually tested a couple different examples of only having two teams, not saving anything about the teams, and then just simulating as fast as possible. And it took us about, I think it was 25 seconds to simulate an entire season. So what you can do, there are two different approaches that I've normally seen for how users create custom leagues. The first one is they start off really, really small, and they let the league evolve over time. The issue with that is that normally it evolves way too slowly for the users, and most of the time they get impatient, okay? And that's not to say that's bad, it's not a bad thing, but at the same time, if your ambition is to make a big league or something that has some meat to it, let's just call it meat, but if you want multiple, if you want multiple leagues, a feeder system, a tournament, or any of these, you know, additional features that OTB has, it's most likely going to need to be created at the beginning from scratch. So understanding what our size and, you know, what our limits are is going to be important so we don't extend too much with our systems. Okay, I think that, uh, I think that pretty much covers the intro course for being able to kind of understand what that is. Let's go ahead and understand, or at least learn, about kind of the different options to get started. So a lot of people know about the new standard game. You guys understand all about the, you know, playing of a real 2020 MLB or international rosters. Now, you can start there and then add on to it if you'd like to. That is an absolute option for you to be able to do. You can also start new historical games if you wanted to be able to take the MLB from 1871 till 2019 and then begin to customize it or evolve it and make it your own thing. You can absolutely start there as well. So if you wanted to start way back at the beginning of time and then redo all of baseball, I know of some people who have actually done this. They've actually played through all of history. They've simulated it all to get right back to the present to see what would be different. And that's a fun thing to do. But for us, we're talking about custom games. We're going to talk about something that is a blank slate. There is nothing from the previous version of the game. There's no real players involved. Everything is going to be handcrafted by you. And this is where the Bob Ross effect comes into play. We can make it all, and it can look as messy as you want it to be, and that's just fine because it's beautiful regardless of, you know, what you're going to do at this point. And technically... Even if you do a new custom game, because I'll show off what we can do about that, even if you do a new custom game, you can still bring in real league players. Don't feel bad about hitting that custom game button. You can still create a real world league if you'd like to, all right? Yes, basically, uh, George, this is basically God mode. You are commissioner, you are creator. Your job is to make sure that everything however, runs smoothly. That's your only job when you're making a custom game. And having fun, of course. Have fun. If you're not having fun, you know, that, that's, that's another whole entire subject. But have fun, please. At least have fun. It's not, if it's not fun, don't play it. But, you know, hey, I can't imagine that OTP21 is not is anything but not fun. You know, it, or no, anything but fun. It is amazing fun. Every single time I launch this game, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. I love being able to play this game. So, you can create real-world leagues into a custom. So if you wanted to be able to bring in the real-world 2020 season with all the teams involved, you can even do the different international leagues if you wanted to. So if you wanted to start your custom game with the actual real international leagues, you can absolutely do that. The problem, <laughs> the problem with that is that all of the real leagues have a whole bunch of minor leagues. And again, remember, 
size matters because of the speed. So when you plan, you need to remember that if you're going to incorporate real MLB or even like the real uh, Nippon League, if you're going to do the Nippon League or even the, um, I think it's the Korean baseball organization has got minor leagues, and I think the Mexican League might have minor leagues as well. If you do some of the bigger ones, yes, yes, matrix size matters. It does in this case, okay? Just, just get over it. Sheesh. But basically, if you're going to do some of these, they will include minor leagues. As it says up here at the top, it will include the real teams, the real players, because we have all of the real players for all of these. But it will include the minor leagues if they're available. So if you're going to do Major League Baseball, remember, that's not just the 30 MLB teams. That's the 30 MLB teams and their minor league teams. So that size is going to be at least six or seven times what you're thinking of, most likely, when you're importing it. You're thinking, oh, yeah, I want Mike Trout. Well, hold on. You also get Mike Trout and the 60 players in the reserve, you know, in the, in the rookie system down in the rookie league for the Arizona Fall League, you know, or the Arizona League for the Angels. You're getting them included. So do you really need all those minor leagues? Now, you can. Technically, I believe you can choose not to include the minors, but there are players in AAA, AA, single A who are probably going to be important to you, you know, like big name prospects like, you know, Gore for the Padres and, you know, Brendan Rodgers for the Rockies or, you know, you've got people like Alec Thomas for the Diamondbacks who's been a great prospect development for them. If you don't want them included, it's fine, but a lot of people are looking forward to seeing young kids play. So if you're really going to do a real MLB situation, you're most likely going to have most, if not all, of the minors involved with your import. So remember that. Size. <laughs> Finish the statement. Anywho, um, what you can also do is you can create a historical league. So basically the two settings we had at the beginning of the game, the create you know a standard game and create a historical game, they're here still. Because custom games encompass everything. It encompasses everything. Because of the fact that it's custom, you could import anything you wanted to. This is, this is your world to create, however you'd like it. You want to incorporate the real world and then bring in, you know, 1871 baseball to see how they compare in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of stats and stuff. You can do that. Absolutely. You can import historical leagues and do real fictional worlds. Um, and, it, 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 and again, it's just going to depend upon whether or not your computer can handle the information that you're going to be doing, okay? Because you don't want to import a whole bunch of stuff, make it way too big, and then realize you have to scrap it all. That's the last thing you want to be able to do is have to realize you have to scrap it all. So in our situation, we're just going to create a fictional league because that's the easiest one for us to be able to do to demonstrate how to do custom stuff, all right? So... Also, technically, you can do tournaments if you already have a regular league uh, inside of your custom game. So if you make your fictional league and then come back to the league creation wizard, you could then create a tournament after that. That's why it's grayed out right now. All right? That's why it's grayed out. Now, you can also go into advanced mode, and we'll talk about this for a quick second, because I guess this is probably actually where we should talk about the most because this is all of your backbone settings. So before you even think about adding a league to your custom game, I would highly recommend you start here. This is your settings area. This is the advanced mode for OOTP, and you're going to get some options that are grayed out because there's no league involved right now, but we want to go to your settings section because this is where the speed aspect is going to get a little bit influence because as you can see we get to choose how often we keep scouting reports so if you only wanted to keep one that would remove older ones and that would reduce uh the amount of files you have so if you want to keep instead of keeping all reports you can keep just one report per season that would speed up your game if you wanted it to be instead of bi-monthly you could do season start and end that would speed up your game as well if you wanted to do bi-monthly or monthly that's fine as well the osa scouts aren't as in you know, as important. However, when you have 20,000 players, that's 20,000 reports. And if you have that being done monthly and you're keeping all those reports, 
that's upwards of eight to that's about eight reports every single year times 20,000. So you're talking about 160,000 potential files being created every single year just to get reports done. And that's if you have my example of the World Baseball League that we loaded up earlier. So it won't be that big for you because you're probably not making a big, massive 500-team league like I'm doing. But just something to remember. If you want to keep everything and you want to document everything, be prepared for it to slow down because it's going to have a hard time doing that much detail. All right. Otherwise, on top of that, the only other thing you can really edit in this section right now is your stats and settings. Your stats settings, my apologies. You can keep just the major leagues. You can keep all of it, or you can keep none of it. So if you're not going to be caring about left-to-right splits for their careers and you just want the current year, you can keep that in the off or keep none section. If you want to keep all of it and be able to have every single season of every single player with their postseason, you know, stats and their fielding stats and their left to right splits, which is sometimes it's really nice to have that kind of information. So sometimes you want to have it on. Sometimes you want to have it just be the one year. And sometimes you really don't care. You're just simulating to see what happens. You know, you're just testing stuff out. And then down below is the most important part. This is the big moneymaker for how fast your game is going to simulate. Now, the first thing that I would recommend change the auto save to once a month once a month please once we'll try again once a month is much better than once a year if your game has any issues during the course of the regular season and it crashes and it crashes to desktop and it probably will do that a couple times if you're just learning how to do custom games don't fret it happens to all of us it happens to me occasionally where i'll be like oh it um it didn't like something about that. I gotta go back and, you know, undo some changes and see what caused that crash. And then, you know, it runs fine the next time. And I'm like, okay, it's it's working better. Might have just run into a snag of someone's face gen or something like that. Um, but once a month will make it so much easier. If you crash and you have an issue and you can't load the game back up, that autosave will save your bacon. All right. So say it with me. Once a month. Good. All right, class. Let's move on. Saving box scores. Now, this is the big one as well. If you want to be able to save all of the box scores from every single league, you can do that. Or you can choose just to do your major leagues, your human leagues, your human organizations, or even just the human team itself. All right? This will help speed up your game immensely because every single time you simulate a game, you have to generate a game log if you have the default settings turned on, it will save game logs and box scores for every single game. And it might be just for your human teams on the game logs, but for every single major league you have incorporated into your league, it will make a box score. And you guys have seen what my box score folder looks like. It is massive. So if you want to reduce that, you can. However, the best way to be able to do that is to limit how many teams you have. Be able to be comfortable with a smaller league if it means it runs faster. So don't be afraid to go smaller because it may just be a much better option, especially if you're running on a laptop. I would highly recommend smaller sizes unless you're running a brand new laptop, which has the new, like, you know, incorporated desktop graphics cards and desktop CPUs. Maybe at that point you can get away with it. But for most people playing OTP, I imagine that most people who have a laptop play no TP are probably running at least five-year-old laptops. <laughs> smaller is better, yes. That is my, uh, that's my running campaign motto now. Smaller is better. Smaller government, smaller, wait, what? No. <laughs> Anywho, um, we also want to talk about some of the other settings on this, on this, on this uh, autosave and log settings section. You can also delay or even completely take out the WPA graph. That's the winning chance percentage graph that you see when you load up a box score. If you don't want those, those can take up quite a lot of space as well. Let me see if I can not blind you guys real fast. There we go. Not blind you guys, thank you. But what you can do, those are all located inside of WPA. And right now it's empty for some reason. But basically if you had all those bar graphs, they would all be showing up right here. Let me see if I can find one that actually has that, because I know I've got some. Let's go into our Rich's Red series really fast, and I'll bring them up from there, because I know we have them in here. So if you go to Images, not KML, Images, please, and go to WPA. 
there you go. So those are all of the graphs from all of our games. And I believe it's just our game. So that's spring training stuff. And you can see wins. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's Pittsburgh, St. Louis. So this is all of them. So this is all of them right here. 158 of these. And they're all about 20 kilobyte size. But again, this is all of the stuff that is being loaded into your game every time you load your save onto your computer, okay? This is more and more information that needs to be incorporated directly into your memory banks. This is not just waiting in the wings. This is literally inside of your memory. From what I've understood, and I, I think I'm correct on this, at least I think I'm correct on this, but these are all loaded directly into your computer because otherwise it would take time to have to load it when you go to a box score. Now, it could be technically doing that still, but I know the only thing that it loads is face gens. Face gens are the only thing the game will actively try not to always have loaded on your system because it takes way more memory to do face gens than to do these. But every single time you save one of these, it's just one more file. One more file that has to come into your system and has to be loaded into the game. All right? So if you need to, turn them off. If you don't really care about the WPAs, if you don't want to see, you know, I mean, this is really cool how we came back in the uh, ninth inning, it looks like, to win the entire game. Um, that's a pretty cool win against Minnesota right there. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of games. Like, maybe we don't want to remember. Let's see. We had a lot of losses recently, unfortunately. So let's go down to the bottom. We beat Miami, beat Philadelphia. I think we're still looking at some of those stuff. There, lost to Atlanta. That's a bad one. I don't like this one right here. So if you don't want to remember... If you don't want if you don't want to be reminded of how poorly you played against Atlanta or if you just don't care about the graphs and they're not exactly the best thing in the world for you, you can turn them off. You can absolutely turn off the WPA graphs. It won't record them and it saves you a little bit of time and speed and size for your game and it will help you if you don't want to have them, all right? So there's a lot of features you can just turn off because you don't need everything. For example, the game logs are kind of cool. I like the game logs personally. This is basically the play-by-play -play commentary written in written form, basically. So I always keep these turned on. Most likely than not, the two things you're going to always need are the game logs and the box scores. But generate highlights for your team. I mean, that's cool if you want to watch a game, that's, that's kind of cool. I mean, right now you could also save replays. So if you wanted to, you could always watch a replay over again. But that takes up a whole bunch of, you know, data, information, and memory. Absolutely, Matrim. You can absolutely do this inside of an already created game. You can absolutely do this. Yes. This is just part of your game settings window. It'll be on the right, upper right-hand corner of your game settings window, and you can change this for any league that's already been started or is currently in development. You can absolutely change it. Yes. So there's a lot of things you can turn off. There's highlights you can turn off. 3D movements can be turned off if you want to turn those off. Um, that's for the replays and, and the highlights that are generated. If you turn those off, you can speed up substantially your game in terms of being able to simulate stuff because this is just more information the game doesn't have to save and it doesn't have to write it to a file. So when you turn off a bunch of these features, your game will speed up. However, a lot of people like these features. I like to be able to go back to a game in the middle of, you know, last year and watch a replay about how somebody performed on a, you know, a three homer day because we're reminiscing about a player. I'd like to be able to do that with Rich, be able to go back and talk about how, you know, Mookie Betts had a two homer day against, you know, the, uh, against the, who was that against? Pirates, I think, or something like that. No, no, not the Pirates, Twins. I believe it was the Twins, actually. Um, and, and be able to watch it. I'd like to be able to watch those kind of games, you know, a year or two down the road. I'd like to be able to go back to our old, our old time frames and be able to say, Rich, do you remember when we had our whole entire, you know, Moya going 100 plus pitches? Let's watch that again. Let's see what Rich did, everybody. We can watch what Rich did and we can replay it and be able to see exactly how poorly that game went. You know, there's just, there's a, a bunch of history that you're going to miss if you don't save some of these things. So at least save the box scores and the game logs. That's my recommendation, is at least do those two. But the other stuff on this list, not as important. You may not need to have any of these other items checked on, except for your news, injuries, and transaction logs. I would recommend you keeping those turned on. 
unfortunately, they are quite immense in size. So if you wanted to keep like the news turned off, maybe you could do that. Um, you also can choose a different time frame in, in terms of only doing two years or ten years of this information instead of doing all of it or none of it. So we try to give you guys options to be able to keep maybe only the last two years, maybe the only last ten years. Because once you get past ten years, that's half of a person's career most likely. You may not need to know about their news information from when they were 21 when they're now 35, you know. Maybe it's not as important what they did in their rookie season. You can just look at their statistics. If you have their box scores and their game logs, that's perfectly fine. That probably would be more than enough to be able to do it. And then, of course, injuries is the same way. You can choose between two years, ten years, all or none. Same thing with transactions. And that's just being able to document where players went, the trades, the free agent signings, you know, the, the Rule 5 draft stuff. All of that information can be saved if you want to. It can also be chosen as not to be saved, and that can speed up your game a little bit. Um, but for at least the transactions, I would almost always keep the transactions. There aren't as many transactions, and most of the time, I'm always going back and thinking, how did this person get to this team? Like, what what happened? What went down? What was, it, was it a trade? Was it free agency? Was it a compensation pick? You know, what? how did this team get this player? And if you don't keep that transaction log information, you actually may not be able to find that out. It might just be all blank. So depending upon what you want to do with your league, how much you want to save, those are the best settings to look at to be able to not only have the correct speed for your, t for your league, but also saving the correct information for your league. If you want to turn some stuff off, go for it. If you want to keep some stuff turned on, keep it on. Absolutely. Technically, the player history is going to be using the logs. So unless they're separate, which at that point, there's a whole other writing process just for that. Um, and I probably should test that really fast, just in case. Because I've always assumed, and I've always thought, and I've always had issues before where I turn those off, and I can't see where people end up coming from or going to. But that might be a different thing. And it, oh, no, hold on. It might be not so much the, the history page goes away, but being able to click on that history page and bringing up the the uh, well no that's a log log that's not even like a news report because the news report are the news logs and so if your player gets traded you're gonna get a news log created and a transaction log created because the transaction logs are part of your league transactions and then there's an actual transaction uh, log that you can go to so I don't know if it saves it even in the player's history. Although that could end up going to your players.dat file. So there might be a way to be able to keep that. It, it, it may keep it that way, Jeff. You may be correct. Um, I'd have to test that. And yes, we may test that for science. I may end up doing a quick little league to show off how fast we can do a simulation, at least on my computer at this point. In fact, that's probably the best thing to do next is to figure out, okay, so let's figure out you know, what would be an ideal setup for most people. And this is going to differ depending upon exactly what your computer speed is and, you know, how big of a league you want. So let's just take, yeah, let's take a 16-team league. We'll start off with that for our test example for the day. So for this test example, we're going to do just simply 16 teams. I'm going to have just AAA. We're just going to do AAA. So that's our reserve roster. Basically, we'll hit next step. And 2020 settings are probably going to be just about fine at this point. You can choose any setting you want to. This is just being able to choose what kind of baseball is going to be played. If you want it to look like 1980s baseball or 2020 baseball, you can go all the way back to 1905 or before. 1871 is the latest you can go. So you can go all the way back to the beginning of baseball, and everyone will play with those kinds of stats and the whole entire, you know, lots of errors, lots of singles, not a lot of home runs kinds of play. You can also change whether or not you have a fantasy draft right here, right now. I'm going to turn that off for this situation. We're also going to go ahead and reduce the schedule. Excuse me. Reduce the schedule. When you reduce the schedule, that will help speed up the game. Less games mean less box scores, means less game logs, means faster speeds. So you want to make sure that, you know, you don't go too ham crazy 
on the amount of games and the amount of teams because that will be your biggest influence on making sure your game runs smoothly and quickly. In fact, we'll go ahead and do two game series. That should be just fine. It's got an accuracy. Let's put that at 100% accurate for right now. We don't really care about that as much. We're not going to have a, uh, enabled uh, evolution turned on because that can mess up your whole entire thing. Got to change that name. To Rocky's front office. Yeah. There we go. And we'll play in commissioner mode. Always play in commissioner mode, folks. If you're creating a league and you're testing stuff out, always play in commissioner mode. All right? So that should be all good once a month. We'll just call it New Game 5 for right now. We're just testing stuff out. Now, now that it's been actually made, this is the final step. You can go straight into advanced mode from right at this point. If you go into advanced mode, boom, your league is right here, ready to go. All right? And you can make changes before you jump into the game right here on this screen. So if you wanted to come in and make some changes, put on the DHs for both leagues, uh, put it down to two for minimum batters faced. Also, here is a big point of interest. If you can, change the amount of roster sizes if you can. This will help speed up the game immensely because what happens is every single player that's created has to be documented and logged into the game, and it has to be inside of your players.dat file. It's, it's written, and it's monitored. So the least amount of players you can take into your league will speed it up as much as it possibly can. All right? So if you don't allow your minor leagues to have unlimited players, that will speed it up because now you're only going to get so many players that the game has to monitor. This will in turn allow you to be able to slow down or at least limit how many people are created in the first year player draft. All right? So if you do actually keep your roster sizes at a smaller level, at least 25, but at a smaller level, you can limit the amount of players that need to be generated every single year for the draft, which will in turn reduce the amount of players that are involved in your game, which will in turn speed up the game. All right? The less you have, the better. Now, we also don't want to go too small, though. You want to make sure that you have, you know, enough players to fill your entire league, and you don't want to have problems with it feeling like as if, you know, oh, there's only one superstar because there's not enough players. Like, I understand. Keep enough players, but if there are thousands of people flooding your free agency, they're just sitting there taking up, you know, f memory space. They're just becoming a nuisance, and they will never will play at all. They're not going to play. Delete them. Reduce your draft size. Make it so that way you're only looking at maybe a couple hundred free agent players and then teams are scrappy and they have to sign players and they have to be more, more, more aggressive and trades mean much more at that point. Um, be free, be, uh, feel free to maybe make it a little bit tighter on teams. Um, better to go smaller than larger in terms of being able to make teams have to fight for players and also to speed up your game in terms of stuff like that. So that can be done in your active rosters and your secondary rosters. Um, if you wanted to and you didn't have a minor league system, you would be automatically have a reserve roster instead. That's what you would see instead of a secondary roster. You can change that from being unlimited to an actual set limit. All right? I believe the MLB Dream, Dra uh, Dream Bracket is going to be streamed on the MLB Network Twitch channel. Uh, they have a separate network that will be streaming it because they have actual commentators doing the game. I don't know if we're planning on streaming any of the Dream Bracket on this channel. I'd have to ask the dev team about that. But I do know that it's going to be done on the MLB Network channel on Twitch. So you can find them here on Twitch and definitely give them a follow because I am very much looking forward to seeing how that OTP bracket plays out inside of our simulator. There are some really cool matchups that are going to be done for that. Um, other things you can turn off in here would be like the Rule 5 draft if you want to turn that off. But basically, this is all just the basic league settings. We will go more into this down the road most likely because as we get into more custom design stuff, um, you're definitely going to be coming back to this page a lot. You always run out of players and have teams like 10 players. If you're running out of players, then you may need to look at increasing the size of your draft. Uh, if you find out that, you know, teams... Well, and there's also a point where teams may not want to sign anybody from the free agency, either because they don't fit what the team's needs are or they're not good enough. Um, what you may want to do at that point 
is increase the amount of players that are involved in the draft. Uh, if you've noticed that it's the minor leagues not getting filled up correctly, you may need to increase the number of rounds, the number of players involved in the draft to be able to fill those minor league teams. Uh, if there's still a lot of people in the free agency, uh, you may need to look at increasing the quality of the draft, which I don't even know if it's possible to do that outside of the Saber metrics, which is, I think, part of... Uh, I think that's part of here. Yeah. You could go into your player creation modifiers and edit them slightly. Y you could do that to be able to make sure that the draft created players are better and that would make it so that way teams want to sign all of them. That's only if you have a whole bunch of like half star over half star prospects, you know, or people on the free agency and there's hundreds of them and the teams won't sign them. At that point, you could also just delete them uh, because they're probably never going to get signed and they're just taking up space in your game. Is there a ratio for rounds, number of teams in the league to shoot for? Yes, there's an actual whole entire um, equation that you should follow along with when it comes to how many rounds you need and how many players uh, you need. Let me go ahead and bring that up really fast because I, I know it's a part of our whole entire situation. I know we're going a little bit out from where we're supposed to be handling for this episode, but it's okay. It happens that way. All right, so... The understanding for drafts, if I can get back to the information, I think this is it right here. So understanding the number of rounds you need in a first player draft is normally done. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Where's the information about that? Oh, I had it up last time. Yeah, that's basically what it is, George, is that basically you want five players per minor league team, and you want to have... Where is the first player drafts? Da, 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 da. I, I know I talked about this in the feeder stream last week, um, but I'm not being able to find that information right now off the top of my head, unfortunately. Let me see if I can figure out what did I do to not find this again. Hold on. I know I looked this up last time. There's two different equations you need to know about. Um, ba, 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 ba. I think I might even have it on a page. Nope, I threw that page away. Of course I did. Of course I threw that away. Let's see. Draft strategies. I don't want draft strategies. I want um, boost helps. Bummer, I am not finding it, unfortunately. My apologies about that. Um, from what I rem remember and recall, it is you need five players per tier of minor leagues, and then it's an equation based off of the number of teams. I think it's the number of teams divided by six because there's on average going to be about six players that are going to retire from each, uh, each team. So you need at least, no, no, that's not right. <laughs> I'm, I'm blanking, unfortunately. I'll have to look it up. I'll get you that information after the stream uh, because there is, there is kind of an understanding of how many to shoot for in terms of players and how many, well, there's not a number of players, how many feeder teams do you need and how many rounds do you need to be able to fill a league correctly, and that's, that's what you want to hit for. That's what you want to go for. So, anywho, 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 I will get that to you later, I think. Yes, yeah, six to nine per feeder league team. That's how many you want being able to go to the draft every single year. Um, depending upon how many rounds, it should be dependent upon... Uh, I think it's the number of teams divided by six times the number of minor league tiers, I think. I think that's what it is. I don't remember now. Yes, that would be a part of the VOD from last week. Mm -hmm. If you go back to episode three, uh, we end up talking about how many you need to create. And uh, we actually even have, an, even have an example up on screen that we were working out of to be able to make that happen. So, yeah, if you want to watch that, that would be better to watch it on the VOD from last week. Because um, otherwise, I might be sitting here for the next 30 minutes trying to explain all that again. And we did that 
We did that all last week. We will cover feeders again down the road. We will incorporate them into our custom games as well, so that way you guys have all that information as well. So, where were we? I think we were just talking about being able to make a quick little test test league to be able to do stuff. Oh, yeah, and we talked about having to go into the advanced settings. So this is all the advanced stuff you can do in terms of being able to edit the league before you jump into the actual game. So if you don't want to start the game and then have to go back to game settings, you can come into here and make a bunch of changes before you launch your game. All right? Now, one of the other things you can do, and we should talk about really, quick, really quickly, is templates because... As you make a whole bunch of leagues, if you're going to make a massive league with multiple major leagues and a whole bunch of settings you have to change for every single league, you can save your progress as a template and then even import the exact same template as a duplicate copy of what you have currently. So if we save this right now as it is, we'll call this test template. We save the test template and we import it right back into the exact same game we can basically double the size. We can double the size of the whole entire league. Now we have two fictional baseball leagues and two triple A's. So if you're doing one league per, you know, like nation, if you wanted to have one, one become Spain and one become, you know, uh, France, if you wanted to do a European league or, you know, if you wanted to basically do a lot of quick editing all at once, you can make your changes, save your template, and then be able to import it right back into the same game with all of your saves coming right into the game. And it's a much faster way of being able to create stuff. All right? We'll probably talk about that down the road as well because there's a whole bunch of stuff we can talk about in terms of how to use templates for different methods. You can even save the template, come back out of the create a game, go into a different one, and then import that last template you just made into a new whole entire create new game situation. So you could basically make like half of the, you can make parts of the game and then end up collaging them all together at the end. So if you don't want to have, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, lists on the left side down here, <laughs> you can literally just make one at a time, save it as a template, and then go to the next one and do the exact same thing. Save it as a template, do the same thing for every single one, and then combine them all together at the end. And that's a pretty good way of being able to quickly make massive amounts of changes and just be able to control one league at a time and not get confused or make mistakes. You can also edit finances in this page as well. Uh, you, can add, you can do any of your options in terms of if you wanted to hold that fantasy draft again, you can do that right here. If you wanted to be able to change the number of games in your schedule, you can do it right here. You can edit how much your spring training is, your all-star game, your playoffs, everything outside of custom playoffs. Custom playoffs have to be done after you start this after you start the game. All right, you can't do custom playoffs until afterwards. So if you're planning on doing some really nice custom playoffs, just be aware you got to start the game first, then you can get into that. Also, if you're going to be changing a whole bunch of stuff in terms of how many games are being played per season, you may need to adjust your milestone settings because some people may not be able to hit. Actually, this looks like a, this looks like it's it's it's, it's been uh it's up in. Ugh. Try that again. This looks like it's been updated to reflect that change, actually. So that's good. Um, if you keep it at 162, start your game, and then come back in the settings and change the number of games you play, these milestones do not reflect that change. They will still be as if you're expecting 162 games per season, and that's just really hard to hit, you know, upwards of, you know, 40 homers a season if you're only playing 100 games. That's, that would be a ridiculous amount of home runs, all right? That's like 80 in real life MLB at that point. So make sure you're aware the milestones may need to be adjusted if you're going to make changes after you start a game. Um, Hall of Fame is the same way. Uh, if you want to change some of those, you can. I don't think there's any real milestone stuff for the Hall of Fame. But if you want to change any of the voting periods, the percentages, anything that kind of stuff, you can do that right here. All right. I think we're pretty well done with all this information. There's some stuff that we'll cover later on down the road in terms of player quality, international people. Um, some of this stuff we'll, we'll, we'll worry about at a later time. Even being able to do like a league that's restricted to certain age groups, you can absolutely do that as well. If you wanted to have you know a 25U league that literally is just you know post-college to you know 25 years of age, and then they get 
sent from there into the real world, you can do that. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can be able to do in terms of settings. Um, and to be honest, this episode has gone on quite long enough as it is for uh, covering the basics of league creation. But there are a lot of advanced settings we'll be covering down the road of more episodes about this whole entire series. Um, I guess I could go ahead and finish with questions. If anyone has any questions, I know it's been a long episode. We've tried to cover basically the basics, and we'll start into kind of... I think we'll start next week on basically what happens when you start a game um, and kind of figuring out what that will look like, what you need to be aware of, and everything about that. If you're expecting those milestones that are starting the steroid era... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If you're going to be looking for um, for some really high milestones, you will need to be preparing to start in a different era, uh, or at least in the steroid era. <laughs> Mike Stones, who's this? I mean, that's a custom player in our league. He's a uh, he's a slugger. He's got uh, he's got the slugging muscles of uh, Mark McGuire. Yeah. So yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up kind of what the intro should be for custom games. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to ask questions. I'm more than happy to answer them really fast. Um, I think we covered everything about the speed, speed options you've got to be able to help speed up the game. Um, basically, if you turn a bunch of stuff off, it will speed up, uh, but you just need to kind of pick and choose which settings you want to be able to, 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 to have in your, in your league. Um, we didn't get to test an actual league in terms of speed, but at the same time, it will depend upon your actual computer speed on how quickly that will work. So in, in all honesty, I've got a pretty beefy desktop. Um, it, it, it won't be the same for you as it is for me because I've got a pretty good computer to be able to handle this kind of stuff because I do tech support work. So I always need a good computer. I need to be able to quickly get some changes done and, and be able to work on some stuff. So unfortunately, I'd like to be able to show off how fast it can go. But at the same time, if I do it and then you guys do the exact same thing, you'll, you'll get different results because of the fact that your computer is probably not the exact same computer I have because I custom built my computer. So, so anywho, I think that's pretty much going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, I'll try to be in either Discord right after this or you can hit me up on Twitter or here on Twitch to be able to ask any questions about how to basically get started with creating new games. Uh, if you've got questions about the intro and being able to just get started, I'd be more than happy to answer those. We will be getting into deeper stuff on, uh, on later streams and being able to get into some of the really nitty-gritty stuff when creating leagues. And as you heard me spiel in the beginning, we have a whole bunch of stuff to work through. So outside of that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I think we did a decent enough job to be able to get people started with custom games and kind of how to get started. Um, we'll probably make a custom league next week and we'll then show what happens when you get past this advanced screen mode and actually launch your game and what to watch out for. So outside of that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your afternoon on this Saturday and I will see you guys hopefully next week. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye.